All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Last week we got so much done on this kayak trailer build and there's a few things that I've thought about since I filmed that video that I wanna to add to this thing and we're gonna take care of that today. I've actually got a list here on the board of a lot of stuff that we're gonna do in today's video. We're kinda of gonna jump back and forth between the kayak trailer and the kayak because I've got an issue that I kind of noticed this week when I was out fishing with this thing that I'm having water uh, kind of overspray over the bow and I know why it's doing it. So we got to relocate some stuff today. I'm going to, I want to show you why it's doing it. That way, if you have the similar problem, it could be the same thing, you know, causing yours to get all that overspray. But before we get into the kayak trailer and the kayak today, I want to show you guys my golf cart because last week I kind of showed it to you in the video. Those of you that seen that video, I kind of showed you my golf cart and told you if you were interested, I'll show you how I built it or, or show you the stuff and kind of what it is. So this is it behind me. This is a 1990 Easy Go Marathon golf cart. It was on its deathbed when I picked it up. It was in the family. It was my father-in-law's actually. Uh, the kids used to actually ride it when they were little, every time they'd go visit their grandparents. But anyway, it was dead. You know, the batteries were no good in it. It was just they, a lot of times you can find these on marketplace and the batteries are dead. So the people are just getting rid of them. Like they're so old, the batteries are worth more, you know, to, to replace the batteries, they're worth more to the cart. And you know, a lot of these people's eyes that use these as a golf cart, you know, as they're built to be. But nowadays we got lithium and you can pick up a lithium battery, restore one of these things that you can get on marketplace for almost nothing and have a really good cart for the property. I use this thing to haul kayak trailers around, chainsaws, like I use this thing all over the yard and it's gonna last forever adding the lithium and the racks and stuff that I did to it. So I'm gonna walk you through it really quick, show you what I've put in it. I'll have everything that I talk about today linked below if you have something like this or you wanna build something like this, you can use those links and get the stuff that I got to do it. But I'll show you this and then we're gonna hop on the kayak stuff. All right, so like I said, this is a 1990 Easy Go Marathon and you can definitely find these everywhere on Marketplace. Like, you know, some of them are pretty rough shape. You know, you gotta kind of weed through the ones that, you know, aren't just, just covered in rust and they're not gonna be really worth restoring, but you can find them and they still sell a lot of parts and stuff for this model on Amazon, which you can get very cheap, by the way. Like I've, I've got to replace this whole front piece right here, see the cracks and stuff in it, but I can get that for like 80 bucks on Amazon still and it's the same exact piece and you can get it with like headlights and stuff in it now too. But anyway, I got the cart and it didn't have the lift or the wheels or anything like that. It was just a basic golf cart. That's what my father-in-law used it for. He'd haul it to the golf course and this was his golf cart. Once the batteries went out, he ended up buying a newer model and this one just kind of sat until, you know, I got it from him a few years back and brought it home and started converting everything. So what I've done so far to this cart is I've added a, I believe it's a four inch lift kit that I got on Amazon, got these wheels and tires on Amazon. I think I paid under 400 bucks for all four wheels and tires mounted on Amazon. And they're, they're not ugly by no means. Now I do plan on changing the tires out to get some more of an aggressive tire, like an all-terrain wheel. And, but I'm gonna keep the rims because you know, they were so cheap, I might as well just replace the tires and put some bigger, heavier duty tires on there for riding around in the field and stuff. I got the windshield, this is a tinted windshield. I think I got it for like maybe 60 bucks or 80 bucks on Amazon. Uh, that is the Prinsu roof rack, and it's gonna look familiar to some of you guys. This is the same rack, and it just happened to fit perfect. I mean, it, it really did. I had it laid up on the wall in here after I got rid of my camper shell, but this is the same exact rack that was mounted on top of my camper shell that used to be on my Tacoma, and it fits perfect. I'm trying to get a better shot so you guys can see it. But all it does is really give me a place to throw boxes and stuff up there. I'm not gonna add a ton of weight, of course, on top of this cart because it's not designed to have a lot of weight up there. And I've got a light bar on the front and underglow lights. And if you wanna see that, I actually made a video about this golf cart about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, where when I first got it, I added the lift kit in that video. And I originally converted it to three 12 volt deep cycle marine batteries, just regular lead acid batteries. They were really heavy. But the issue you have with those batteries are not just the weight, they, uh, you know, they are very heavy when you put them in here, but a lead acid battery, you, you can tell when they're draining down versus 
a lithium battery. A lithium battery, when they start draining, you, they, they, they keep the same amount of power the whole time. Now, once they're dead, they're dead. It just shuts down. But you have that same amount of throttle, the same amount of power, and the same amount of speed the whole time. No matter what percentage the battery's at, you still have that amount. But anyway, so this is uh, under the seat. Now, this is where the batteries used to be right here. This is where there would be six batteries uh, that were six volts each. Is that right? Yeah, six batteries at six volts each. I converted it to the 312s, uh, and then I got rid of them completely. And as you can see, there's no batteries in here other than that one little bitty one right there that I use for my aux beam setup. You can see my fuse panel, and that is what controls my lights. I guess I can show you the lights really quick. I got a little switch here. I turn that switch on, which turns on power to up here. And I've got my light bar. I'll turn that on and my underglows, and the rest are kind of empty. I used to have stuff on them, but I don't now, but you can see I got some low glows, and I put these on there when we plan on using this at, you know, campsites and stuff. And then I've got the light bar across the front, and it works really good for riding around here at night on the property. And it's cheap. I mean, all of this is very cheap compared to, you know, when I say cheap, I'm comparing this stuff to what you would pay for one of these ATV buggies with baskets and racks on it. You know, they're, they're like $10,000. The tractor supplies got them now, Lowe's carries them, but those mules and the Kawasaki stuff like that, they're very, very expensive. And if all you need is something to ride around in your yard or your neighborhood, this will work just fine. The most recent thing that I added, and I think I mentioned it in the video last week, it was actually in the box, is this rear basket. Now this thing is actually, I got it on Amazon, it's a basket that's designed for, I think, the front of a four-wheeler. And I got it because I measure, you know, I had the measurements on Amazon and I was able to take the measurements, if I can control this gimbal, take the measurements from there and then make sure it would fit here. And then what I did was I just added a piece of angle iron across the back right here where the golf bags used to be and welded it up and then used that angle iron to make me a place to mount this thing. And it's solid as a rock. But all that being said, you can have all of this for an old golf cart, but it's actually useless unless you power it. And I'm gonna show you how I power these golf carts. And if you're interested, I'm gonna have a promo code and links for this below. So as you can see, I had to build this little custom battery box back here. And I did that because the battery is too big to fit under the seat of this specific cart. And that is because back then, let me show you. This model actually has the motor controller in the middle and the regular little batteries used to be scattered all the way around it. And by putting that right in the middle, it kills any way to put a big battery right there. But it was able to fit right back here with no problem. I just built me a little box, carpeted it, and I put my battery back here. This is a EnjoyBot LifePo 36 volt, 100 amp hour battery and it is a beast. The product number on it, see if I can show it to you, is LAF36100. I'm gonna link that battery below. You can get it on Amazon or their website. And I did contact EnjoyBot and told them, you know, what I'm gonna be doing with it. They give me a promo code to share with you guys if you buy it from their website. So I'm gonna have both links below. I'll have the Amazon website link and their website link. It will move. That battery will actually, if I floor it, it will pop a wheelie. It'll pick the front tires off the ground on this thing. It's, it's kind of crazy. But the good thing about it is it's lithium. So I can charge it up and you can also get a charger from EnjoyBot, but I can charge this thing up. And as little as I use it, I hardly ever have to charge it. I think I've charged it one time since I've gotten it and it's just, it holds its charge because it's lithium. This battery also is rated to be charged 5,000 times up to 80%, meaning that I can, I can run this thing dead and charge it back up 5,000 times, and it, I'm not gonna have any issues with it. This, this thing is gonna last me forever. As long as I take care of it, you know, you gotta keep it out of the below freezing weather and stuff like that, just like you would any other battery. But as long as I take care of it, I'm never gonna have to buy another battery for this cart and I can just continue to build the cart because there was a while there before I switched to this lithium that those lead acid batteries that I put in there, those marine batteries, 
they were just, they would drain so fast that I thought it was pointless for me to even put any more money into this cart until I got this battery. Once I got the good battery, I'm okay with putting more money into this car to use it around the property because I know it's gonna last me forever. The motor will go out before that battery will go out, I guarantee it. I'm gonna add some more stuff to this as I do the bigger wheels and the bigger lift and stuff. I'll kind of update y'all in the future on it. But that is it for those of you that was interested. Now, let's get back to the kayak stuff. So like I said, as for the kayak stuff, I did make a list after I finished last week's video of stuff that I wanted to take care of before I go fishing this week. I do plan on going back out. We're supposed to have a warm front coming through right before the cold weather gets here again. And I wanna get a couple of days out on the water. And I really wanna test this trailer out. I have yet, since I y'all seen that last video, I haven't taken this new trailer set up out. And I can't wait to use that loading platform that I put on the front. I, I'm, I'm more excited about that than I think the rod box. That loading and unloading is gonna be so much easier by myself at the bottom of those boat ramps. But anyway, I did put together a list of stuff that I needed to do to the trailer and the kayak. Uh, the first thing is bearing buddies. I mentioned in the video, you know, if you build these trailers, always try to put bearing buddies and use marine grease. And I ordered new bearing buddies for this trailer and I was gonna, if you watched the video, you notice you didn't see me install any because I ordered the wrong size. These hubs on this old trailer that I rebuilt with you guys a couple years ago, uh, they're the old style hubs where these hubs are actually, the diameter's like a weird, I think it's 2.32 inch diameter and that's the exact wheel hub size you gotta get for these bearing buddies. Every other trailer that I've ever built is a two inch. And I think the wheel bearing buddies for those are 1.98, which is what I ordered. And then during the video last week, I went to put them on and I realized that I had to get the right one. I didn't buy the right one. So anyway, the right ones are here in the shop. I've got those. I've got to fix a running light. I noticed that one of my running lights were not working. So I don't know if the LED just went out, which is highly unlikely. It's probably just a bad ground on that light. So I'm going to fix that today. Uh, the main thing that we're gonna do, oh, and a couple more things on the trailer, is install rod tubes on the upright post on the side where the rod box is. So the rod box, which if you've seen the video on my trailer right here, there two posts come up and I've got these rod tubes, they're over there, you'll see them in just a minute. But I got these rod tubes that I had an idea that if I had a couple of rod tubes on the trailer in the campgrounds or the parking lots where I'm at, you know, when I go fishing, Usually if I want to change line or rig up or you know something like that, you got to kind of prop the rod up or lay it on a picnic table or lean it against the trailer. If I got some rod tubes on the side of this trailer, I'll be able to drop the rod into the tube and kind of change the line out right there where I'm at. So if I'm in a boat ramp parking lot and I got a backlash that I need to fix or reline, I can use those rod tubes. So I'm going to put a couple of rod tubes on those uprights, they won't stick out you know, much further. They'll be, kind of blend in and they'll be really useful at the boat ramp. And I got to install one eye bolt. I just wrote that down because I didn't want to forget when I launch my boat, you know, I do it solo. I back down and just kind of dump it off in the water. I use a long strap and it's kind of a stretchable, it's actually, it's a bunch of camping and kayak and paddle leashes. They got that stretch to them that I've got linked together. And it's, I keep that tied to the front of the kayak and when I redid the trailer with you guys last week, I took the eye bolt out and I forgot to put it back. And that eye bolt is where I take a carabiner. I've actually got it, let me grab it. It's hooked to the front of the kayak. You can't see it up there, but this is it. This is my stretchable rope. But what I do is I take it, see if it'll follow me down here. And I've usually got an eye bolt right here that I'll clip this to so that when I dump the kayak into the water and I drive forward, it slowly pulls my kayak back up, you know, to the boat ramp. And then I get out, unhook this from the back of the trailer. Right now, I don't got an eye bolt to hook it to, so I need to do that. I didn't want to get there and realize that I had to kind of tie it up and, and make shift away while I was at the bottom of the boat ramp. But that is it, unless I think of something else while I'm in here working. It's just going to be a regular kind of work week video on the trailer, a bunch of easy stuff we're gonna do with the trailer. I am gonna slide the trailer off onto my cart. I mean, slide the kayak off onto my kayak cart because I did notice that these videos where I work on my kayak with you guys, up until now, I've been able to just kind of keep the kayak on the trailer and do the videos with you on the trailer. But now that I've added that rod box, let me walk over here so you can see. 
I've added the rod box. It's kind of right in the way of me filming for you guys, which is not a big deal. I can just slide it off. It's no problem to slide this thing on and off, but I'm gonna slide the kayak off onto my cart. We'll take care of the stuff that we're gonna do the trailer really quick, and then we're gonna get to relocating the battery, which I haven't even hit on yet. So what we're doing to the kayak today is I, I've been running the Dakota Lithium 100 amp hour battery in the front hatch because I've got my 36 volt Newport battery for the rear motor back here in the black pack. When I did that, it, I did it within, to keep in mind that I wanted to level the weight out in the boat. And what happened though was, is at having the motor guide XI3 hanging off the front of the bow and that Dakota Lithium battery in the cockpit up there or in that front hatch, I've added a lot of weight to the front. Now that Newport vessel motor, it will at full throttle, it'll pick up the front of the boat just a little bit. But with that battery up there and that XI3 hanging off the front, it keeps it in the water just enough that when I'm running at 30% with the rear motor, my NK300, it's kind of plows the water instead of picking up over the water. And what it's doing is it's getting a lot of spray over the bow of the boat. That spray is coming back down and it's getting into my rod tubes and then it's getting into the inside of my hull. So I want to switch that out. And what I'm gonna try to do today is I've also got this uh, Power Queen 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. This is the same battery that I've been using for my solar setup that they sent me months ago in my truck. If you guys remember that, if you're a follower, you know what I'm talking about. I, it's their mini battery and it weighs nothing. I think this thing weighs under 20 pounds and it will fit in the black pack with my Newport Vessels battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test it out. I looked at the specs of my, you know, don't get me wrong, my Dakota Lithium battery is fantastic. I absolutely love it. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relocate the battery to the back and shed a little bit of weight. Plus, I'll, I, can't fit the, I can't fit the big Dakota Lithium 100 amp hour and the Newport in the black pack. I've got the 16 by 16 black pack but I can fit the Newport and this lighter mini and the specs are identical. Uh, so we're gonna see, I'm gonna find out if that's true or not by this Power Queen. I'm gonna swap it out today. We're gonna stick this back here in the battery box. I'm gonna build it out so that it's locked in tight. I'm gonna put some foam around it and that should get my weight off the bow of the boat or most of the weight and I shouldn't have that overspray problem. That was a lot of talking. Now I wanna to get to work. Let's get this kayak off the trailer first. We'll knock the trailer stuff out and then we're gonna switch over to running wires and relocating this battery. First, I gotta do the old kayak shuffle in the garage where I barely got enough room to move my kayak on and off this trailer. But I've got the system pretty well down pat. And a lot of you guys that watched last week's video that didn't know about my kayak cart uh, in the comments, and I've gotten some messages from y'all, uh, y'all have asked about dimensions and specs on how to build this thing. And I guess I just, at the time that I made the video, there, I've actually got the video and I'll link it right here, that where I built this cart, uh, I put the specs, all the cut links and everything that you would need on the screen in that video you just have to wait to the end of the video. So at the, towards the end of the video, I actually put all of the cut links and everything right on the screen. So if you go to that video, if you've already watched it and you missed it, you might've just skipped through it or ended the video too early, shame on you. But I, it, towards the end of the video, I did put all the cut links and stuff there. If you wanna build one of these, let me turn this tracker back on. There it is. So this, uh, this cart's amazing though. If you haven't built you one yet and you need a way to get your kayak on and off your trailer or on and off the back of your truck. This is the, this is the bee's knees right here, guys. Y'all see what I gotta go through to move stuff around in my garage? It's a whole shuffle routine, but I've been doing it for so long, I've got it kind of down pat. Now we can spin the kayak right over here out of the way. Now we can work on the trailer. And it's not gonna be a whole lot on this trailer, like I said, we just gotta pull the wheels off really quick. And I'll show you the bearing buddies that I'm going with. 
So these are the ones that I ordered first and they're too small. I had to order the right ones. Big difference in size, like, let's see. There's the, what is it, 1.98. And then there's the other ones right there. I can't get it to focus on them, but they're a lot bigger. So I got the right ones now. Hopefully they're the right ones. We're gonna find out here in just a minute when we pull the wheels off. I wish I had a battery powered impact, but I don't. That means my air compressor is gonna be kicking on while I'm trying to film the whole time. Get marine grease, guys. So I did wanna mention that. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier or in the last video, but if you're putting these bearing buddies on your jet ski trailers, your kite trailer builds, your boat trailers, always get the marine grease. I've had other grease fail before. I've, you know, whatever was in my gun, usually I would, that's what I would use. And I have had water get in there. This keeps, this won't mix with the water like that other stuff will, it's really good stuff. So I got some fresh marine grease. That's what's in my gun now, but I don't know how much I got left. So I got a new tube of it. Air compressor's probably gonna kick on, so we'll see. Y'all cross your fingers. Oh, these even have the dust caps on them. That's nice. Some of them you gotta you can you gotta get the dust cover separate. So that's gonna be good. As long as they fit. Come on, be the right size. If I can get the dust cover off, holy cow! There it goes. Oh yeah, I think that's gonna be it. Oh man, they better fit inside this. Yeah, they will. Let me get a board. They fit. Let's, let's pump some grease in them bad boys now. There it goes. I seen the spring move. I was gonna say, I ain't even seen the spring move yet. I'm glad I brought I bought grease. Now, is this gonna fit in here with that? All right, I had to wait on the compressor to quit running. All right, that side's done. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side really quick. You see me do it once, you don't have to see me do it again. And then we're gonna jump into the trailer lights. Right, wheel bearings are done. So we can mark that off the list and move on to the lights. The rest of the stuff's pretty easy. So wheel bearings are done. I gotta fix the running light. And I wanna show y'all a trick that I use the Dakota Lithium uh, Powerbox 10 to fix trailer lights and stuff. So I use this guy right here, the Dakota Lithium Power Box 10, and I use some leads from one of my multimeters to pin my trailer plug, the seven pin plug. And when you do it, let's see if I can show you really quick before I set the camera up. Oh, let me get down here. So your seven pin plug, if you've got a plug like this, or you can do it with your regular five pin, but holding it with a nub at the top, the top right is gonna be your running lights and the bottom right is gonna be the ground, excuse me. And what I do is I plug those and I don't have to hook my 
truck up to the back of the trailer in order to see if my lights are working or not. So what I'm gonna do is plug it really quick and I'll show you how I do it. And then we'll find out which light it is because I can't really remember if it was the driver's side or the passenger side. I kind of forgot already. So we're gonna plug it up, get some power going to the trailer lights, see if I can fix this bad light that we got. And then we'll move on to the mounting the rod tubes and then we'll hop on the kayak stuff. I found out after I got this Dakota lithium box that I had an old set of leads from my old multimeter and they just so happened to pop right in and fit in the little positive and negative spots on the top of this battery box. So I'm able to use it to pin my trailer plug. Let me get it to track me down here so I can show you guys. So what I do is I pop those onto the box and then I plug my ground into the bottom right and I just stick it in there like that. And then the top right I know is my running lights because I've done this a zillion times. And then I turn it on and as you can see, did you see the lights kick on? Let me stop the panning. Now it won't pan anymore. See, I kicked the lights on. So there's my light that's not working. As you can see, I've got a light here, no light there. All my green lights kicked on. My rear lights look good. Yeah, so that is my only bad light right there and it's on the driver's side. So now what I get to do is I get to keep the power hooked to that light and I'm just gonna slide up under there and uh, check the ground. Usually on running lights, it's the ground. It could be a bad light. I, I've never gotten a bad LED bulb before, but you never know, it could, it could be messed up. So I'm just gonna check the connection, see if we can get it kicked back on. That way we can mark that off the list really quick. And then we are going to do the eye bolt really quick while it's, the kayak's off the trailer, stick it on in the back corner, and then we'll drill some holes in these uprights and put these tubes. I didn't even show you all the tubes yet, did I? I guess before we, I slide under there. So these are the rod tubes I was talking about. These guys right here. Let's see if I can get you to follow me over here. And what I'm thinking is, is we're gonna mount them one here and then one down there. I don't think it'll look bad. They're already black, you know, it's just plastic. They don't stick out past the fender. And the idea is, is I'll be able to drop a rod right there while I'm at the boat ramp or at a campground, wherever I'm at. And I, I don't have to prop my rod up somewhere to change line, like I said. So that'll be pretty cool. We'll do that after we get these couple little things taken care of with the trailer first. Let me see if I can figure out what's wrong with this running light really quick. Sorry about that, my camera died and I had to run in there and grab another battery. So I spoke too soon about the LED lights. I tested it and the LED bulb is gone. So I, I think I jinxed myself by saying I've never had one go bad, but they got these on Amazon. I went ahead and just grabbed my phone really quick. I ordered a four pack for like $9. So I'll have backups and I'll just be able to swap this one out. I wanted to go with the same exact one so everything matched. So I went ahead and ordered it. So that's gonna have to, I'll have to fix that later. It's always something, ain't it? Something I'll have to fix later. But I am gonna go ahead. I've got these stainless steel eye bolts that I've used on the other trailer. And I've got one extra one and we're gonna use it for the back really quick. I'm gonna bolt it on and take a uh, grinding wheel and just cut off the excess because I think it's got like a four inch shaft on it. So we'll put that on really quick and then I'll spin this trailer around and we'll drill some holes. I'm gonna use, uh, what are they called? The flush mount studs, uh, I'll show you in a minute. Well, I can't remember the name of them, but we're gonna drill a hole and put inserts in and be able to screw directly into the, the side of the post there instead of just drilling a hole and like tap it, you know, trying to tap that thin metal or whatever. So what I'm thinking is mounting them like right in here somewhere, even on both posts, because I know I don't need to, <laughs> but just doing one up front would kind of drive me nuts because it wouldn't be uniform. <laughs> so it, it, it would bother me forever. <clears throat> I think that's it. Mm. So much easier if you got the right tools though, y'all. And I might have drilled that hole out just a hair big. I might try to find a little bit smaller of a 
drill bit to do the rest of these. Let's, let's make sure that's gonna work really quick. There we go. The other one will be down like that. One more here. It's not gonna be too bad. We knock the rest of these screws out and then we can move on to the kayak, finally. All right, so the trailer is done. We're done with it for the day. I've got everything knocked out on it except for the light. I had to order that, of course, but I'm just gonna throw that on. We got the rod tubes installed, the eye bolt now. Next thing on my list for this week's video is swapping this battery around like I mentioned earlier. I am going to go with this Power Queen Mini and we're going to be swapping it out with the Dakota Lithium that I've got up front. I'll show you guys really quick my front hatch setup. So this is my current setup right here. I've got the Dakota Lithium 100 amp hour and you know it's not a huge battery but I'm trying to fit the battery in the back back here next to this battery. This is my Newport Vessels 36 volt. This is what runs my NK300 on the back. And as you can see, I don't have a ton of room in this box and I would like to have both batteries in this box. So if you see, I can pick this up with one hand. It is very light, but watch this. I can just drop it right in there. I can even slide this battery to the side and we're gonna strap it down with the new port in the black pack because I really don't use this for anything other than a battery box because I've got the tackle storage on the side. I've got tackle storage right here. I've got tackle storage in here. So I, I've kind of just converted my black pack into a battery box. So this is gonna be the battery box and what I use for this foam stuff, guys, uh, I know some of you guys are gonna ask me in the comments, when I get packages in, or if I order anything that comes with foam, I'm kind of a hoarder. I keep every bit of it. I've got, in the basement, I've got more than I need. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'll cut pieces to fit and make kind of a custom molded spot for both of these batteries to go into. And then I'm gonna lock them down with a strap. But first I gotta run the wire. And it kind of sucks it's because I used to have my both batteries back here, you know, before I switched to this uh, Yak Attack box. And now that I've relocated the Dakota Lithium up front, I've ran the wire up there. So now I got to rerun the wire to the back. Oh, I'm just going to unstrap this and I want to show you guys. See how I've used the foam in here too? This stuff works really great. I'm one of those guys that if I'm working on a project, I try to keep everything and I shouldn't. There's a lot of stuff in my basement that I should have thrown away that I'll probably never use. But when you say that, then one day you need it and you go down there and you threw it away because that's happened to me before too. And that makes me not want to throw away stuff even more. Let me unhook this battery real quick and I'll show you the wire and we're going to rerun it to the back. And what I'm going to use are these Yak Attack through hole, through hole wiring kit, this bad boy. I'll show it to you with this camera so you can see what I'm talking about. I, I keep a pack or two of these hanging up on the wall here because I work on a, a lot of kayaks, you know, you know, throughout the year. And I try to keep all this stuff on hand so when I need to make a quick adjustment like we're doing here, I can do it. I don't have to order stuff or wait for stuff or jerry-rig stuff. I've got the stuff that I need for running wires through your boat. These Yak Attack uh, through-hole kits are great to have on hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'll just, I'm gonna drill a hole in the boat and come out through this through hole straight into the box. So we shouldn't even see the wire back there when I'm done. And that is gonna relieve the weight of this Dakota Lithium. Let me grab a wrench. I've been meaning to do this ever since I, I switched it. And I noticed I had the overspray a couple of weeks ago when I, it was actually one of the videos that I filmed, I noticed that I had the overspray, but I was like, ah, it's not that bad. But the last couple of trips, I, I, it's gotten worse. I've gotten more and more water in the boat. And the water on these Hobies, it comes over, it hits this little trough right here, and it's designed to run back out through the drive system, which it does good, but it also gets into the rod tubes, which I don't even use. We're gonna block these off very soon. 
Y'all stay tuned for that. I'll show you how I'm gonna get rid of these rod tubes because I'm not gonna use them. And once water gets in there, there's no way for the water to get out and they're not sealed very well on the inside. So that water eventually makes it into the hole of my kayak. But yeah, I mean, the battery's not that heavy. It just, it's not gonna fit back there. There's more foam. And then we'll be able to just switch it right over to that. This one's probably gonna go in the other boat because I plan on running a uh, motor on my wife's boat soon, the banana boat, and then we can put the Dakota lithium in that. And I can use this on my truck for the solar power since I'm swapping it over for this. And I looked through the specs again, you know, in between, while I'm filming this video, this morning I pulled them back up. The specs between both of these batteries are the exact same. Now, we're gonna find out if that's true or not, and I'll update you guys in the future, but look at the size difference. I mean, it's, it's a drastic size difference, but they're both the same exact, let's see if it says it on here and I can just kinda, no, it don't, I'd have to pull up the specs. But I pulled them up online and everything was the exact same. The, the wattage, like how long they run, like everything was the exact same except for this is this one that we're gonna be throwing in here, you know, is half the weight and half the size. So we're gonna find out if it's true or not, because I already know this one will run my trolling motor all weekend long with no issues at all. That Dakota Lithium is the, it's the real deal. We're gonna find out if, if I start running the battery dead for no reason or, or I don't have enough power, I'm gonna know then that we gotta get this thing back into the boat. But we're gonna give it a shot and see. It's been working fine in the truck for the camping setup, so it should do fine in here. And that should get my weight out of the front. Now, what sucks is I do got, I got holes up here where I had it strapped down. You can see I got my strap coming through here, and that's what locked my battery in. And then I had my wire coming through here, which is okay. I'm not, I don't plan on running this tub very long anyway. Once we add the live scope set up, I plan on building me an area up front like most guys do in these Hobies and installing the black box and all that stuff. The, is it the black box? Yeah, the black box for the transducer. But we'll do all that later. Today, we just gotta get these wires pulled back to the back, drill a hole, run them into the box, and then we're gonna be done. Then I can go fishing this week. Thank goodness. Let's get this thing out the way. Now I can show you kind of how I've got my hole set up with this camera. So I, for now, I've got me a little plate built and this is probably where I plan to mount my uh, live scope, but I've got my yak power mounted to this and each one of these runs to, you know, a different thing, my lights and all that, my graphs and all that stuff. But here's my marine wire. And this is the plug right here that comes out of the back of my kayak. Uh, I mean, out of the front of the dash of the kayak and it runs to this wire, which I've got a lot of extra in here, which is good because I'm glad I didn't cut it short because now I've got to relocate it back to the back. I just got to untangle most of this stuff. But this is, let me tell you what size this is. This is marine grade 10 gauge, so boat cable. This is a 600 volt cable. This is a 10, you can do eight. I kind of wish I would have went with eight, uh, but Maybe I'll upgrade in the future, but 10 works just fine. Also, I'd like to mention that that Dakota Lithium that I just pulled out of the front is not the only battery that runs all of this. Th that battery was only dedicated to my XI3. What I run my graphs off of, I've got right here. I can show you guys. I've got a 12 volt, 23 amp hour Dakota Lithium battery, and that thing is awesome. I run both of my graphs off of that. I run my lights, my yak power systems run off of that. I try to make sure that I don't, my, my motor batteries are strictly for the motor, and then this battery runs everything else. I don't want anything draining my motor battery. And I've got this just kind of Velcroed and stuck in there. Nice lightweight battery. I love that thing. So we're keeping that one in there, but I gotta get all this stuff out of the way. So I'm gonna try to reach that wire and pull it back through. Did I get it that time? Hey, look at there. All right, this might be a little easier today than usual. 
Let me get my seat out of the way real quick. Move my catch board. I love this catch board. This is their aluminum black one. They even put my logo. I don't know if you can see it. I got my logo on it. They got a new one coming out that I've got some cool stuff coming from catch soon. So those of you who watch my videos, you know, watch all my videos and keep up to date with this stuff and the partnerships and stuff. Catch is, uh, if you don't know, if all you think of is catch is those boards, I'm fixing to blow your mind with an upcoming video because catch makes a lot more than just a catch bump board. <laughs> and they've got more stuff coming every week. And I got some really cool stuff coming. It lost me again, didn't it? Come on, pick me back up. There we go. Dang, I hadn't seen the top of this T-Stack. Boy, you take that seat out, you got plenty of room to work around now. And I think what I'm gonna do is since I've got this hole, let me show you. Since I've got this hole right here, and this was the old seat cable, so that 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 hole was from the factory, and that's where you used to pull this little lever here that says seat kickstand. You used to be able to pull that, and you would uh, it would tilt this back, and you could lower your seat and raise your seat. I am never ever going to use that. I matter of fact, the kickstand pull is attached to my XI3 release. And that's how I, I pull that to release my motor in and out to stow it and, and you know and, and launch it or whatever. So I'm never gonna put anything else back through there. I don't wanna drill a second hole. So I think my best option is to just pull that little piece of tube out, open that hole up a little bit and I can come out right there with a the wire and then we can shoot, we can come right out of this, go straight over the top and then you can see with a seat off where my wire goes into the black pack here, I can just go right in next to it and then we can be right into the battery box. This will be a lot easier than, than I was thinking it was gonna be. We just gotta get it back there. Let me grab some pliers and I'm gonna see if I can just pull that tube out. There she goes. That's just a little guide. And then there's the little plug. So now we got a hole there. We're just gonna open it up just a little bit. If I can get my drill bit back there. Open it up just enough to mount one of these guys. It kinda locked, didn't it? Must have turned my head. Let's stop it right here. So I can show you off what I'm gonna be doing. If you've never installed one of these Yak Attack through hole kits, they're very simple to use. So you got your outer ring. Let me grab the other camera. So you've got your little outer ring right here. And you don't have to drill the hole a certain size. You just drill the hole the size that you need into the, into the, the body of the kayak or the hole. And then you pick, you pick the size you need. And the, they've got a lot of these pre pre-made holes right here. And then one side is a solid hole. And what I'm gonna do, since I'm gonna need a bigger bigger one than this, so we're probably just gonna put, um, I might be able to get by with that one. If, if I need to though, you can uh, drill these out a little bit bigger. Let me drill this hole, get the wire through, and then we can bolt the, uh, bolt the yak, yak attack thing on. If you're gonna drill holes in your kayak, get you some of these. You can get them dirt cheap off Amazon or Harbor Freight. That's the, the little Christmas tree bits. That's what I call them. They're just step up bits. They cut clean round holes into your boat with no issues at all. And you can get them, and you can get them to go up as big as you need. I think they got them that go all the way up to like a two inch hole. So I'm gonna put a extension on this and try to get around that seat bracket. We don't have to go very big. I only want to go about as thick as that wire, and I think this bit may be the exact size. I just don't want to lose the bit in there, which I may do that. <laughs> and it cuts through it like butter. I'll show you with the other camera.
trying to go slow because I don't want to run my bit out into the hole and leave it. And I dropped the bit in the hole. <laughs> I knew I would because I was going, you usually want to get a bigger step than you want to go to. Like you don't want to go all the way to the max one because once you go through it, it's really hard to get it back through. So you want to step out to, I should have got one of my wider trees. That way I didn't have to go all the way to the max one. I'll just have to fish it out here in a minute. Gotcha. All right. I got my I got my bit back. All right, so now that we got the hole drilled, I'm gonna show you guys a trick that I use to pull wires through these kayak holes that you can't really reach all the way through. And that is, let's see the, what this is called. It's like an electrician's tape and it's retractable. You can reel it back in. And it's this, this one right here, I think I got this on Amazon. It's just thin enough that you can kind of bend it and manipulate it through these holes. And what I'm gonna to try to do is go through that hole that we just drilled and see if I can make this tape curve back around. Cause the hole, so I can show you right here. You see the hole right here on that camera? So what I try to do is stick this in here and get, get it the, the curve. And I'll set it down. Hopefully it curved the right way. Got it. Oh, I had it. There it is. And just like that. Oh, it lost me again. Picked me back up. There we are. So now I've got this through here and I've got our wire here. Now you just want to tape it in a way that you can slide it through that hole without it coming off. Let me grab some uh, electrical tape. So now you just take you some electrical tape and just tape it to the end of this. And I try to do it with like, since I'm pulling two wires through, I try to do it with one wire on each side. Any way that you can make it as thin as possible to go through the hole, unless you're just pulling it through a big hatch and then you can just tape it up however. I drilled the hole where this is gonna barely fit. <laughs> so I've gotta try to get this as thin as possible. All right, let's try that. I got it taped up. And you wanna tape like on the end that's gonna hit the hole first. Make sure it's kinda of tapered down right there. I don't know if this is gonna fit very well, but we're gonna find out in just a minute. Making this curve up is going to be the tricky part without pulling it off the, the wire. There we go. I'm only going to pull out as much as I need. Now you just wind this thing back up. I've used this same little retractable tape for so many kayaks and bass boats over the years, running, running wire. This, this works really good for running wires down the side of a hole of a, like a fiberglass bass boat because you can't get your arm in there at all. Like a lot of times it's just a really small little tunnel and you can run one of these from one end of the boat to the other and pull your wires. So now we're just gonna find where we wanna go through here first we got to make sure that you put our yak attack through hole kit on so now i'll show you we're coming out right here and what we're going to do is this is just going to come straight over this little hump and i'm going to put a hole right beside our newport cable that comes through and then we're going to be able to go straight into the back and then we'll be done now we got to do is make sure we put our yak attack through hole kit on and you wanna run your wires through this main one and then these little pieces here pop in. It's not too hard at all. All right, I was actually able to come through the same hole, so I didn't even have to add an additional hole. It's a tighter fit too in that hole with, with both wires going through 
it kind of seals that hole up even better. So now I'm gonna go ahead, before I lock down this Yak Attack through hole mount, cause you don't wanna, once you screw it down, it kind of, you can still pull your wire through, but you don't wanna do it. You kinda wanna wait to screw that down and lock it into place once you get your wire where you need it. Cause I may need to pull out a little bit more. Let me go ahead and get some out. And now we can drop in our Power Queen Mini, and hopefully this thing runs as good as that Dakota Lithium. And all I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna drop the battery in here, and I've gotta, let me turn this other camera really quick, I'm trying to get y'all some good footage of this, those of you that are interested in stuff like this. And be sure to let me know about these longer videos in the comments. If you like these long, detailed videos, I know half of this one at the beginning was on the golf cart, but a lot of you guys were interested in that. Did I let the battery die on this thing? I'm such a bad YouTuber. I'm letting batteries die, SD cards fill up. All right, fresh battery in the GoPro. Now I'll show you the inside of the box. Yes, I know it died because of the battery. But anyway, let me know what you think about these longer, drawn out, more detailed videos. If you like them, I need to know because if, if the views don't do as good on these or I don't get as, enough support on these, I may just switch back to the little 15, 20 minute quick, you know, DIY tip videos that I have been doing. But I like filming these for y'all because a lot of you guys are coming into kayaking. You know, a lot of my viewers who are looking to mod kayaks and trailers and stuff, you're new to it and you, you're trying to learn this stuff and there's not a ton of content on YouTube about detailed instructions on how to drill holes in kayaks and run wires and mount graphs and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that you guys are liking these longer videos and these more detailed videos. So let me know below. Anyway, I've got the wires coming through. See how I was able to get them both through the same hole? That worked out really good. And this right here, we'll just, once we get, once we get it how we want it, I'm gonna form this wire over and then we're gonna put two screws in and it'll lock the Yak attack mount straight down right there. Got a good seal around the wire to keep water out. And now I'm just gonna cut some foam. I think I'm gonna put this to one side, kind of like this, and then just put foam on the other side. Either that or I'll put it in the middle and then put foam on either side. I don't know, let me figure this out really quick and lock everything down and I'll show you how, how it ends up looking. All right, I think that's gonna lock her in. Let me show you guys how it turned out. So check out the view from the top, man. I have got this thing sealed all the way around and I did pull the battery out and put a piece on the bottom too. So this thing is completely encased and I had to cram it down in there. The strap goes around both batteries and it's locked into the black pack right here and locked them both down. So now I've got the 36 volt right here and the 12 volt, but this is also supposedly, this is, you know, according to the specs, this is a 100 amp hour battery. And you can see the size difference compared to this. This side, this is a regular size battery, and this is how much smaller this mini is. So we're gonna give it a shot, and we're gonna test this thing out, guys. I, I've got high hopes for it. It's done really good, as you've seen, or if you follow along, you know, that battery is the one that I use as my solar battery that uh, when I did the solar hookup in my truck camper build, this little mini did really good. We ran a fridge off over it for the weekend, uh, charged our cell phones, it did really good. Now I have yet to use it to run a motor, like a trolling motor, so this is gonna be a test. I'm gonna take it out this weekend and try it out. I'm really glad that I did this today to shift the weight from the bow on my boat back here towards the back, even though we were able to shed a little bit of weight. I can't remember exactly how much weight this uh, Dakota Lithium 12 volt 100 amp hour is, I'll look it up and I'll put it on the screen right now. So this is how much the Dakota Lithium weighs and this is how much the Mini weighs, the Power Queen Mini that we just put in. So minus those and you, you'll see how much weight we was able to shed and we really relocated the weight to the back of the boat. So it should do really good. Now all I gotta do is finish this boat up today, clean everything up, I'm gonna stick it back on our trailer and then we're gonna be good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching this one and all of my other videos on my channel. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button, guys. I upload every Monday at six o'clock. As I said earlier about the catch stuff, I've got, these guys are fixing to launch a whole bunch of new products, the, the creators of the, the catch board. If you fish kayak tournaments at all, you know what a catch board is. I mean, it's been the golden rule forever of how you measure your fish for kayak tournaments. 
So those, that company, the owner of Catch reached out to me and he's like, hey man, we're fixing to drop a lot of cool products and it's gonna, it, it's, it's all gonna be made out of aluminum. It's gonna be anodized different colors. It's some really cool stuff and it's boat specific, boat specific stuff that you can also get. Stuff that they're gonna make for, you know, exactly my Hobie Pro Angler or the Bonafide and stuff like that. So stay tuned. I've got a lot of that stuff coming. I'm going to do one full video where we're going to trick this thing out with all of Catch's new products. So I appreciate you guys watching again. Catch me next week at six o'clock on Monday. Peace.